Hello everyone. Today we continue with wave energy module and today we discuss wave types and how we can determine the wavelengths and the wave speed for different types of waves. There are three types of waves, deep waves and for deep waters waves and seabed they don't affect each other. And deep waves are defined when the ratio of water depth divided by wavelengths is greater or equal than 0.5. Another type of waves is shallow waves. The properties of the waves become dominated by water depths. And these waves are defined when the ratio of water depths divided by wavelengths is less or equal than 0 0.05. And finally, intermediate waves. And for this type of waves, the seabed starts to have an effect on velocity of the waves. And these waves are defined when the ratio of water depth divided by wavelengths is greater than 0 0.05 but less than 0 0.5. For deep water the wave does not feel the seabed and the seabed does not feel the wave. Deep water waves are defined when the ratio of water depth divided by wavelengths is greater or equal than 0 0.5. Looking at full equations how to determine the wavelengths we can see that the wavelengths depends on both wave period and also the water depth. In this equation you can also see that wave length is on both sides of this equation. Therefore to solve this equation we need to use iteration method. For deep waters the hyperbolic tangent would be equal approximately to 1. So if we substitute the ratio of d divided by lambda as 0.5, because for deep water waves it should be greater or equal than 0.5, your hyperbolic tangent value will be approximately 1. Therefore, we can see that for deep water waves, the wavelength depends only on wave period and there is no dependence on water depths because hyperbolic tangent is approximately equal to 1. And we know that the wave speed is equal wave length divided by wave period. So substituting instead of wave length, substituting this equation, we get equation for the wave speed. And wave speed would be equal gravity multiplied by wave period divided by 2 pi. And we substitute all the constant values, we get the wave speed equal 1.56 multiplied by wave period. Therefore, you can see that velocity is approximately 1.56 times the wave period. And therefore, in the deep ocean, the longest waves travel faster than the shorter waves. And this is referred to as dispersion. And this is unique feature of deep water waves. Let's solve an example. We have waves that run on a shoreline with a period of 12 seconds. We need to determine their speed and the wavelengths in deep water well away from the shoreline. We know that for ocean waves, effects of surface tension can be neglected. And we can determine the wave speed using this equation as I show on this slide. So the wave speed in power 2 would be equal gravity multiplied by wavelength divided by 2 pi and multiply by hyperbolic tangent of the product wave number multiplied by water depth. 2 pi divided by lambda is the wave number. But we know that for deep water, hyperbolic tangent of this product is approximately equal to 1. Therefore, we can say that the wave speed in power 2 would be equal gravity multiplied by wavelengths divided by 2 pi. But we also know that the wave speed is equal wavelengths divided by wave period. And we also know that for deep water, the wavelengths is equal to gravity multiplied by wave period in power 2 divided by 2 pi. Therefore, substituting this into this equation, we finally get equation for the wave speed for deep water. And for deep water, the wave speed would be equal gravity multiplied by wave period and divided by 2 pi. So you can see that for deep water, the wave speed depends only on the wave period. 
Therefore, we can calculate the wave speed to be equal 18.7 meters per second. And now we can calculate the wave length as the wave speed multiplied by wave period, and we get 224 meters. Now let's consider shallow water waves. Shallow water waves are defined when the water depth is less than 1 20th of the wavelength. And this can be written as the water depth is less or equal than 0 0.05 multiplied by wavelengths. Or this would be the same as the ratio of water depth divided by wavelengths is less or equal than 0 0.05. Therefore, we can write that our hyperbolic tangent of the product wave number multiplied by water depth would be equal approximately to the product of the wave number multiplied by water depth, where wave number is just equal to pi divided by wavelengths. Let's check. So hyperbolic tangent of the product k multiplied by d would be equal hyperbolic tangent and instead of k, we write 2 pi divided by lambda multiplied by d. So it's our ratio d divided by lambda, which is equal to 0 0.05 for shallow water. And this hyperbolic tangent would be equal to 0 0.3042. And if we just calculate the product of the wave number multiplied by water depth, this is equal to 0 0.3142, which is approximately within 5% of the value of hyperbolic tangent of this product. Therefore, we can say that there is only dependence on the water depth. And we can write that for shallow water wave, we can write that lambda would be equal. This is our standard equation. And instead of hyperbolic tangent, we can write this just product of k multiplied by d which is our k 2 pi divided by lambda multiplied by d. And therefore, after cancelling 2 pi, we get gravity multiplied by depth multiplied by wave period in power 2 divided by lambda. Or from here, we can say that wavelengths for shallow water would be equal square root of the product gravity multiplied by water depth and multiplied by wave period. And from here, we can also say that the wave speed for shallow water would be equal to square root of the product gravity multiplied by water depth. Therefore, for a given value of wave period t, the wave length lambda decreases as d decreases. And also, the wave speed decreases as water depth decreases. And finally, the effects of bottom friction on wave speed are generally very small for all wave types. Now let's consider intermediate water waves. Intermediate water waves are defined when the ratio of the water depth divided by wavelengths is between 0 0.05 and 0 0.5. And for these conditions, both the wavelengths and the wave speed depend on the wave period and also on the water depth. So I show the full equation for the wave length and also full equation for the wave speed. You can see that the wave length depends on both on wave period and water depth. And the same applies to the wave speed. It depends on wave period and the water depth. In front of hyperbolic tangent, in blue here and in red here, I show the equation, which is the wavelengths and the wave speed for deep water. Therefore, our full equation for intermediate water wave would be the wavelengths is equal to the wavelengths for deep water multiplied by hyperbolic tangent of the product wave number multiplied by water depth. And the same is here. The wave speed for intermediate wave water would be equal to the wave speed for deep water multiplied by hyperbolic tangent of the product wave number multiplied by water depth, where wave number is just 2 pi divided by lambda. Therefore, units for wave number in radians per meter. On this slide, I show summary how waves are defined and what types of waves we have 
and also how you can calculate wave speed and wavelengths for each wave type. We have three types of waves, intermediate waves, deep waves, and shallow waves. And these are defined based on the ratio of the water depth divided by wavelengths. So when this ratio is between 0 0.05 and 0.5, we have intermediate waves. When this ratio is greater or equal than 0.5, we have deep waves. And when this ratio is less or equal than 0 0.05, we have shallow waves. And for deep waves, we have dependence on wave period only, no depends on, what, on water depth. And for shallow waves, we have dependence on water depth. And it's only for intermediate waves, we have dependence on both, on wave period and water depth, for wave speed and wavelengths. And these are my equations for wave speed, and these are my equation for wavelengths. I personally would prefer, instead of a table, to have a graph. And here I also present a summary of wave types and how you can calculate the wave speed and wavelengths for different wave types. So if we plot the graph of the ratio of wavelengths divided by wavelengths for deep water, and here we have the ratio of the water depth divided by wavelengths, we have three regions. So this is our shallow wave region, intermediate wave region, and this is our deep water region. And for this, we defined shallow wave when the ratio of d divided by lambda less or equal than 0 0.05. Here, intermediate waves, the ratio is between 0 0.05 and 0.5. And finally here, the ratio for deep waves is greater or equal than 0.5. And now, for each of these regions, I show summary, which is equations for wave speed and wavelength. So you can see that it's only for intermediate waves when you use full equation. And you can see that intermediate waves, you have to solve wavelength equation using iteration method because you have lambda on both sides of this equation.